nice to be able to darken an overexposed photo or color correct, but there are times you might want to make a change to just a portion of your image and not the whole thing. In that case, you would need to select the portion you want to work on. There are a few different ways you might select parts of your image, and we'll be looking at what's available in Adobe Photoshop, but these tools are similar to basic tools in other photo manipulation programs, such as Microsoft Paint or Irfan View. The most basic selection tool is the rectangular marquee. In Photoshop, you will usually find it in the control panel on the left, also called the tools panel. With the rectangular marquee, you just click and drag to create a selection. This creates your selection box. You can click inside the box and hold down the mouse button to move your selection box around. Now, any adjustment you make will affect only the selected area. You can also switch from a rectangular marquee to an ovular one if that better suits your needs. Just go to the rectangular marquee button and hold down your mouse button. You'll get a little pop-up menu with more tools. Many of Photoshop's tools have variants in the pop-up menus just like this. If you need a bit more finesse than just a big rectangle or a circle, you can use lasso tools. These selection tools allow you to guide the path of your selection area more precisely. There's the basic or free select lasso tool that allows you to move your cursor to select a portion of the image along any lines you choose. It's a bit like drawing freehand with a mouse, which can be hard, but it can give you a very exact selection. It can be easier to do this if you are zoomed in a bit. A bit easier, but less precise, depending on what you're selecting, is the polygonal lasso tool. It's one of those cleverly hidden pop-up menus behind the basic lasso tool. With this tool, every time you click, you create a new anchor point in your shape connected by straight lines. This is great for selecting geometric objects or anything with generally straight edges. When you want to complete your selection area, just bring your cursor back to your start point. And when you see the little circle appear, click again. And there's your selection. Similar to this, it is the magnetic lasso tool. It works like the polygonal lasso, except that it does a little bit of edge detection and makes it easier to follow edges or go around corners. If you want to select an area that's all one color, like the sky or somebody's attractive black shirt, or if your image has a clearly defined and sealed border, then you're in luck. Try the magic wand. It will automatically select everything of similar color value simply by clicking on that area. You can use the control panel at the top of your screen to change the tolerance of the tool to make it more or less picky. A lower tolerance means it will select only those pixels with a color value closest to where you clicked. As the tolerance increases, the range of color it will accept will also increase. When using this tool, it is often helpful to set a low tolerance and then hold shift while clicking again. This adds to your selection each time you click so that you can be more precise in what you're selecting while also getting as wide a range of color values as you need. That is a really useful selection tool. Right below your lasso tools, you will find the crop tool. This tool allows you to crop or reframe your image. You can click and drag like you did with the rectangular marquee, but now if you double click inside the box you've created, you will get rid of everything outside the box. You have cut away the parts of the image you didn't want and are left with what was inside your box. Even the most basic photo program will crop your image. Now all those quick snapshots can be cropped into nicely framed portraits. Just remember that if you crop, you will get a smaller image. You may want that new crop photo to sit proudly on your photo shelf at home, but at this size, it just isn't going to work. Luckily, you can resize images in editing programs. There are some issues with resizing. If your original image does not have a high enough resolution, then when you resize it, you may get a blurry image. Let's try it. We have our cropped image, and we can go to Image, Image Size, to get our dialog. There are quite a few options on here. Basically, 
It shows you the current size of your image and the resolution of your image. There is a selection box that indicates if you want to constrain your proportions, which means if you change one aspect, like width, the height will change automatically to keep the same aspect ratio or proportions. The resolution here can be important. If you have a low resolution image and you try to make it too big, it will come out very fuzzy and blurry, even with the resampling capabilities of a program like Photoshop. These selections offer different ways that Photoshop will automatically try to make the image look as good as possible by intelligently filling in the empty space when you enlarge the image, by having each pixel check around it to match colors. These are just different mathematical algorithms to do that. If one doesn't work well, try another. It might help you improve your enlarged image. Adobe Photoshop has many powerful tools that are pretty easy to apply. By learning a few tools at a time, you can begin performing the most common tasks now and gradually learn more tools as you become comfortable with the program. When used in combination, these tools can make it a very nice image.